Okay, so the extra. Or actually, if you do 313, it kind of answers the reason. All right, so before I get going, anybody not get their exam back from last time? Okay. Moving right along. What page is 313 on? That's exercise 313, right? That's correct. 145. 145 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Analyzing the effects, transactions, and T accounts. Let's see. Lisa and Amelia have been operating a catering business for several years. Now they're going to start keeping track of what they do. <laughs> In March 2011, the partners were planning to expand by opening a retail sales shop and decided to form a business as a corporation. Traveling gourmet, the following transactions occurred. So we're just going to put these in T accounts, right? Okay. Um, help me out. Read the first one for us. Well, this is addition eight, but received eighty thousand dollars cash from each of the two shareholders to form the corporation. In addition to two thousand dollars in accounts receivable, fifty three hundred dollars in equipment, a van appraised at a fair value of thirteen thousand dollars. Okay, let's let's slow down a little bit. Yeah. We're going to have lots of stuff. So, in addition to the cash, they got what? Accounts. All right. Well, we'll get to the amount in a minute. I'm just going to get all the account, the accounts. Okay. Some equipment. Okay. Supplies. Okay. A van. Well, there's equipment and then there's the van. I'm going to put it down as vehicle. Because I can. And it won't make a difference. And what else did it say? Uh, common stock. Okay. So in exchange for the common stock. And what does it say about the common stock? Gave the two owners each 500 shares of common stock at a par value of one dollar per share. Uh, one dollar par. 500 shares each, one dollar par value. Okay. So I, I'm set up at least. Questions so far? All I did was identify the accounts and the par value of the stock and how many shares. What's that? Yeah. We're in the eighth edition. The, the dollar amounts may be a little different. No, it says uh, nothing about the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's leave it in. Because you, it's probably spelling it out, but they're going to get, even if they just put cash in, they're going to get common stock. Mm -hmm. All right? So, um, how much cash did they put in? $80,000. Okay, so the company's getting $80,000 in cash. Cash is an asset, it increases on which side? Debit. Debit. So I've got... 80000 per person now, here. Does it say that? Yeah. yeah. Each. Each. Sure. Each. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it down twice. I could have written 160000 and that would have been fine. Okay, so we put $160,000 in, and then we got those other things. You said there was, what, $2,000 in accounts receivable? That's correct. And accounts receivable is what? It's an asset, so it's a debit. Okay, what else? $5,300 in equipment. Also an asset, $5,300. And a van appraised at a fair value of $13,000. And a van worth $13,000. Notice that's what it's worth, not what they paid for it long ago. Okay. And then were, were there some supplies? $1,200 in supplies. Okay, $1,200 in supplies. Anything else? And then gave the two owners each 500 shares of common stock. Okay. So there's 200, there's 500 shares times two, there's 1,000 shares of stock that we gave them at $1 par value. 
So how much do we record in the common stock account? One thousand dollars. It's number of shares times par. Good. So, and that common stock is a credit. Am I imbalanced? No. Not in the slightest. So let's do the math here. 80, 160, 162, 175, 180, 180,300, 181,500. My math good? So all those is 181,500. Yes? So all the assets was worth 181,500 equals the common stock, which was $1,000, because it's number of shares times par. Where's the rest of it go? Additional paid in capital. Plus additional paid in capital of, it's got to be the rest, 180500. So you add those two together, you get the 181,500. Everybody see how that worked? Everybody comfortable with that? Okay. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to erase this and I'm going to write in additional paid in capital 180500 transaction A. Now am I in balance? Yes. Questions, anybody? Okay. Was that where you were challenged? Or do you want to keep going? I'm more than happy to keep going. All right, let's keep going then. All right. Part B, or item B. Purchase a vacant store for sale in a good location for 360000 We bought a building. A vacant store. Also. All right, I'm going to call it a building, which I will abbreviate BLDG. How much was it? 360000 Okay, so we got a building worth 360. It's an asset, so it increases as a debit. How did we pay for it? $72,000 in cash down payment and signing a 10-year mortgage from the local bank for the rest. For the rest. So I'm going to have a note payable. So if I'm giving up cash, we do what to cash? Credit it for $72,000. Three sixty minus seventy-two is how much? Two eighty-eight. Two eighty-eight. So I owe the bank two hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars, and that's also a credit because it's a liability. So I owe this, and liabilities increase on the credit side. Everybody comfortable there? Excellent. All right, item C. Borrow $50,000 from the local bank on a 10% one-year note. Okay, so this, this note was several years, right? So I'm going to call it long-term. I'm going to put another note, not an M. Another note payable short term because it's one year and how much did I borrow? 50,000? Yes. Liabilities increase on which side? Credit. Credit. That's at a 10% interest and I assume they're just not going to be a simple interest. Would you just bump that up to what? 5,500? Excellent question. So when you borrow money, the bank is going to charge you what's called interest. It's a fee for use of using their money. And the fee accumulates over time. So if you go to the bank and you borrow 50000 today, okay, sign all the paperwork, they give you 50000 you go over to the next teller and you go, I want to pay off my loan. How much is the payoff? It's 50000 How long have you borrowed the money for? A minute. Right? So no interest has happened yet. So we're going to record the interest at today's value. Here's what we borrowed. Okay. Over time, we will owe interest, and we'll record that over time. Okay, and that goes in the interest expense. Correct, but yeah. we won't record it when we originally record the loan. That makes sense. 
It's good? Yeah. A lot of people get that one confused, so I want to tackle that right out of the gate. Okay? Anybody else? Item D, please. Purchase and use food and paper supplies costing $10,830 in March in cash. Okay, so we're going to buy some supplies. Supplies are an asset. They increase as a? Debit. Debit. $10,830. And we paid for it in cash, which decreases as a? Credit. Okay. Because um, it says you purchased and used it. Price was to do. Does it say that? Yes. Ah, different. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You're good. So we would have a supplies expense. Thank you for catching that. Expenses increase as a debit, right? Okay, now let me make sure that I remove this, otherwise I'll be out of balance. So I've got a credit here and a debit there. I'm good, yes? Okay. Now, it says bought them and used them. That's why. Uh, e, please. Catered four parties in March for $4,200. What is, what is that? We catered parties. That's, that's revenue, yes? Okay, so we have revenue. And how much revenue was it? 42? Yes. Even? 1600 was billed and the rest received cash. What is 1600 was billed? What does that mean? Accounts Excellent. So accounts receivable is an asset. It increases on which side? Debit. This is E, right? E, 1600 on account or as an accounts receivable. What's the difference? How much is the difference? 4200 minus 1600? I'm sorry? 2600. So the rest of it we got in cash $2,600. Debit, debit, credit in balance. Everybody see how I can have multiple, what I call legs of a transaction. I can have two debits or I can have two credits or three credits and it's all okay as long as it's in balance. Okay. Uh, F, we're up to F. Made and sold food at a retail store for $11,900 cash. Okay. What is that? Revenue. It's 11,000, how much? 900. And we got it all in cash. Cash increases. Debit side. This is good. We got cash. We like that. Okay. Um, G, please. Received a $420 telephone bill for March to be paid in April. Telephone. How much was the telephone bill? 420? 420. And that's an expense. Expenses increase on which side? Debit. Debit side. Uh, that's G. So how did we pay for the telephone bill? It's not due yet. We haven't paid it yet. So what is it? How do we treat it? It's what? Is it an asset? It's an accounts payable. We owe it to someone else. We know that an expense is a debit. Let's walk through that. If, if we have a debit, we need a credit, which implies that it's a liability or a reduction in an asset, like cash. But did we reduce our asset? No. So we must have accounts payable here. I'm going to stick that in right here. So we owe $420 for the phone bill next month. Good? Okay. H, please. How many of these are there, by the way? It's H. H is it? Okay. Oh, there's a whole other page. Okay, so H, please. Pay $363 in gas for the van in March. 
Uh, so we paid for gas. I'm going to call that fuel expense. Expenses increase as debit. 360. How did we pay for it? Cash. In cash. So cash would go down. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Expense. There you go. Okay. Everybody good with that one? Because we're paying for it now. Let's make it tougher for when we do the math, right? Because we're doing the math in our head, so why not? 363. There you go. I was still in balance, though. <laughs> I made a mistake, but I made the same mistake. <laughs> um, I. Paid $6,280 in wages to employees who work in March. Okay, I'm going to put wages. Expense I six thousand what? Two eighty. Six thousand two hundred and eighty dollar debit because it increases my expense. How did I pay them? Cash. So cash decreases six thousand two hundred and eighty dollars. Like that. Questions on that one or any of them? Okay, is there uh, another one? There's two more. Okay, I believe it's J then. Paid a $300 dividend from the corporation to each other. <clears throat> dividend. Okay, where does a dividend go? Retained earnings. Retained earnings. Notice it's a new corporation. And we don't have any retained earnings yet, but we've been making sales and we have some expenses. So I'm assuming we have some profit. So we're now going to distribute some of that profit to the owners. And it was 300 each, correct? So $600. Why is it a credit? Or, or is it a credit? I was hoping somebody would jump up and go, that's wrong. <laughs> It's a debit. Okay? There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. We're going to credit cash because cash is leaving the com company. So you know the other one must be a debit. Also, think about it. Retained earnings is accumulated net income. When do we have net income? When our revenue is bigger than our expenses. Revenues are credits. Expenses are debits. So to have net income, I must have leftover credits. Another way to think about it, right? Okay, everybody follow me? Yeah. Good. Okay, uh, JK. Purchase $50,000 of equipment. Okay. Purchase $50,000 of equipment from Kelly Hall. And renovated and decorated the new store for $20,000. Added to the cost of the building. Okay. K. We bought some new equipment. Equipment's an asset, increases as a debit, fifty thousand. And then we paid another, was it twenty? Another twenty thousand to decorate the new school. Add to the building. So I add it to the building. Debit, debit. I have 70000 in debit. How did we pay for it? Cash. Okay, so I'm going to decrease cash by $70,000. Fair enough? Yes. Am I in balance? At least on that one. Questions on any of those? That's all of them, right? That's all. Okay, what does it ask us to do next? Um, it basically says, record in the T accounts the effects of each transaction for traveling for me incorporated in March. Identify the amounts. Okay, we did that. And it gave us the accounts needed. So I guess as long as our 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's. It, it basically said, "Do this." Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take it a step further because that's what we should do. We now want to total these. We want to. We want to calculate our ending balances. So, if someone with a calculator could tackle this one, I'm going to tackle all the ones that only have one number in them. <laughs> How much is the cash? Six seven. Six seven. Sixty four. Six four. Four hundred twenty seven. Four twenty seven. Okay. Um, Thirty six hundred dollars. Fifty five thousand three hundred. Notice how I didn't line these up well, and it gets a little confusing. The neater you are, the easier this is. So I'm, I apologize for my mess. This one's lined up pretty good. 380. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Zero, zero, 001. Right? Okay. Everybody comfortable so far? So we calculate the ending balances. And then what's the next thing we do? We could total the te debits and credits, or in the real world, we're going to create a trial balance. Okay. okay, a trial balance is a listing of all the accounts in asset, liability, uh, equity, revenue, expense order, and then debit and credit balances, and we total that. Okay, we did that. In, we sh I showed you this tool. Yes, I hope so. I would be remiss if I had not. So we need the name of the company. Uh, who? what and when, the what, the who is uh, the name of the company, what is trial balance, Bal uh, the when is a date, I don't know what the date is. So what's our first asset account? Cash. Notice I don't write assets up here or anything, I'm just going to list them. And I'll have a debit and a credit column. What's my balance in cash? 64,427 debit, correct? Everybody see that? Okay. What's my next account? Assets is accounts receivable. And my balance is 3,600 debit. And then I have supplies of 1,200, is that correct? Yes. And then I have equipment. Uh, 55,300 and then I have a building of $380,000 and I have a vehicle of $13,000 debit and I have accounts payable Accounts payable, is that a debit or a credit balance? Credit. Okay, $420 credit balance. Uh, note payable short term is $50,000. Note payable long term is $288,000. Good? Everybody with me so far? Questions? All right, what's next? Common stock of $1,000 credit. Look at all of this out of $1,000 in stock. Remember the additional paid in capital, which is next. And that is $180,500. Then we have retained earnings of $600 debit. Okay? Moving on, we have revenue of credit balance 16,100. We have supply expense Ten thousand 
8.30, telephone expense, 4.20, uh, fuel expense, $363, and wages expense, of $6,280. All expenses are debits. Good so far? All we did was list them, right? Get them in the correct column, debits or credits. Everybody happy? Questions? Now, all we need to do is total these. Has anybody already started by chance? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to write total down here. How many, how, what do we have for all the credits? $504,527. There's no seven. They're all zeros on the end, so. We're missing a seven somewhere. Are we? Oh, this is credits. What what do you have for a total? Does everyone agree with that number? Yeah, I got that for the debits. Okay, we need to check the credits real quick. Credits are that 536 equals. What's that? 536. 020? Okay. Okay. So there we are. Here's our trial balance. And we show that all of our accounts are in balance. It does, the problem doesn't ask us to do this, but we could use this as a great tool to build our financial statements from, correct? Mm -hmm. look, at, look at what's going on here. Here's all of our assets. Here's all of our liabilities. Here's all of our stockholders' equity, revenue, and expenses, all grouped nice and tight together. So we can come all the way down across here, there's your balance sheet, and the bottom is your income statement. Questions on that? Does that answer everybody's question on that problem? So that was three problem, exercise 3-13. Okay, good. I think my problem was I wasn't being as specific when I was checking my accounts. Like you made an account just for the B for the main account. I think I was trying to well, put things together. But even then it should have added up. But you could have ended up with the vehicle and equipment. Could have. And you should still come out in balance. I just need to be a lot neater too. Neatness counts, big time. Notice, you know, you start not lining these up and it's hard to add them up. So neatness is a big, big deal. Any other questions on this one? Okay, what other homework problems do you guys want to tackle? I heard an um. Somebody's got one? Exercise 3 4 or P? P yeah. Okay, so you own a restaurant, it's a Wendy's, so, you know, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, whatever. We bought a new grill. What is that to the restaurant? What? Equipment. equipment, exactly. So we're up here in the equipment world, and how did we pay for it? Cash. Cash. The only reason why I was thrown was because it said we're identifying expense accounts. We weren't identifying cash 
accounts. That's why I confused it. Oh, it asks you to identify expense accounts. The only thing it could be talking about, and we haven't really touched on depreciation expense yet, but depreciation is matching the cost of the equipment and the building and the vehicle with the, each month or each time period that it generates revenue. So if you buy something on the 31st of the month, is there time for you to use it in the business and depreciate it? No. So would there be an expense? No. And we're going to cover depreciation more as time goes on. I, that's almost not a fair question yet. Or they've forgotten that we haven't covered that yet. Yeah. But it says like on January 31st for the month of January. So it's like right. So on, on the last day of the month after we close business, here's what we did. Okay. Other questions? So you guys want to just dive into chapter four? Yes. Yes. Hang on. Let me look at the schedule real quick. We were also going to go over CP 3-2. Let's go find CP 3-2 and take a quick gander at that. Page 156, thank you. Okay, refer to the financial statements of Urban Outfitters in Appendix C, which is way in the back. So if we go back there, is there a page number or does it just say Appendix C? It just says Appendix C. It's also called C-1. Um, and then it says, what is the company's revenue recognition policy? Well, how are we going to know that from an income statement? We're not. Remember we keep talking about the notes to the financial statements and the things you can learn from the notes? If you look in the notes to the financial statements for Urban Outfitters, I'm sorry, what? C31. On page C31, that's what she said. I, it's, let's see. I don't know that it's there. Okay, let's go, let's go look there. It says C9, notes to financial statements, accounts receivable, inventories, property, plant, and equipment or property and equipment. Uh, revenue recognition is on page C10 for me. I have the seventh edition. But it'll say right in here, rev oh, first sentence, revenue is recognized at the point of sale for retail store sales or when merchandise is shipped to customers for wholesale and direct to customer sales. Net of estimated returns. We'll talk about that later. Um, but it tells you right here, we recognize revenue when we complete the sale. So they're at the cash register, they give us cash, we give them the goods, bang, we're done. But it, it goes on and it tells you more because there's more detail here. It says if it's uh, direct to customer, i.e. catalog or internet, when we get the money and we ship the goods, we recognize the revenue. Um, does it go on and say anything different? Okay, so the accounts receivable, it says net of estimated customer returns. What does that mean? Anybody? Does that mean the accounts for people sending this stuff back? There you go. They take, when you go to, you know, Macy's or Target or wherever, do you keep everything? Has anyone ever taken anything back? Okay, everybody here has, right? So the store knows that if they sell $100 worth of stuff, something's going to come back. Someone will return it. So they estimate what that is, and they record, they record the revenue net of that. And by net, I mean something fun like this.
So we're going to have revenue. Revenue increases on which side? Credit. Credit. So I sold $100 worth of stuff. How much cash did I get? $100. 100 bucks. I'm in balance. I'm all good, right? But I know I'm getting some of this returned. Have I set up any, any accounting for it, any provision? No. We're going to have an allowance for returns. That's an F for returns. And let's say I expect 10% of stuff to get returned. So I'm going to set that up. So is there Actually, a, yeah, yeah, go ahead. That's a type of revenue. That's it offsets of this. It offsets this, yes. Okay. Okay. Are we supposed to balance? No, no, no. I'm not done yet. <laughs> I stopped and I'm thinking this through. Um, there must be a liability somewhere to go to, with this. And I don't know what they call the account. I bet if we looked through the balance sheet, I'd find it. But there's going to be a, a liability over here. So that when I report my sales, I only show 90. And then when they... Um, make the return, I offset this and it becomes zero. But I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank. I apologize. I'll, I'll look it up during the break. Fair enough? Okay. So if it's revenue net of the allowance for returns, that means it's taking that into account. So on your income statement, you'd go revenue, mm -hmm. sales, $100. Less allowance for returns, 10. Net sales, 90. That's what they mean. Okay. Okay. So like revenue net of taxes at the end of your... No. Difference. Has nothing to do with taxes. This is just deriving what your net sales are at the end of the day. Sure. I'm just so, it functions in the same way as, as the end of your... That's a very loose okay. approximation, but okay. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you get other things in with your allowance. Um, you could have uh, less returns. So we know that people brought back ten dollars worth of stuff. Uh, discounts. We put it on sale. We gave everybody 10% uh, off. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, damage. Damage. Yeah. Well, that's more if we bought it. But you could have discount for a damage. That would be a sales allowance. So we actually end up with uh, $75 in net sales here as a result of subtracting these other things. Kind of cool. It's more work, but yeah. Is yeah. it generally built into um, their well, their reported sales? Is it anticipated? Do they do it beforehand. We yes. Expect they're going to send ten yes. back. Yes. Okay. Rem the remember the matching. Clear. Remember the matching principle. Mm -hmm. We want to match these returns with the same sales that they generate. Even if they come and return it in month two, month one, month two, if they return it over here. I still want to account for it when I made the sale. And if there are no returns? So if there are no returns, you don't have it. <laughs> but remember, this is an estimate. Have I explained what an estimate is? OK, an, est an estimate is wrong. It is us going through a calculation to make it look like you know it's an exact science. But really, we're making our best guess. And then you account for it later in well, later on, when we find out that it was really 11 instead of 10, we have an expense in month two. We don't come back and fix month one. Okay. But we only have a, a, an error of 1% at that point, not a 11% error, sure. which is far better. If it's a discount, then it would be a discount. It, it's the same thing. Okay. It's just you lump it in with the other month. 
because theoretically you are so close here that it's immaterial over here. It doesn't have an impact on the outcome. Sure. Okay. Other questions? Good questions. All right, so. I have a question. All right. So we're estimating the returns and the discounts and the allowances. So is that form, if there was no returns on month one and the return was on month two, we estimated the, the return on month one. Mm -hmm. Is it in a source of like an accrual? Yes. We will do this. We'll do it specifically with the uh, accounts receivable aging. So I'll show you how, how it works. But I just understand the concept for now, and then we'll start doing them. Good? All right. Just give me a little time. Yes, ma'am. The discount is throwing me off. Like, I understand you can count for returns, but discount is throwing me off. I don't understand why it's in that same category. Okay. Here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm say, Macy's, I want to sell this for $100. Sometimes I have to discount it or put it on sale to sell it. And it's important to them to track their margins to know how much stuff they ended up really discounting. So I understand what you know, human nature is. I want to just record this as, as a sale of 75 and forget these other things. Mm -hmm. But they want to know this top number and they want to know how much of it they really had to discount. Because it tells them how good they are at, at their business. Did I buy the right stuff? Did I buy it for the right time of year? And they analyze this and look. So you want to know that kind of stuff. OK? If you, if you ever work in a retail establishment and you do this, um, you will see it happen. And you'll watch them look at this and determine. Uh, this is part of how you evaluate how your buyers did. It's part of how you evaluate how your retail stores did. Because what if one store has very few that they had to discount and another store has a lot that they have to discount? I think what's really off is that the returns, that's like you, you make a sale of $100 and then you take out $10 of that just in case they return. Well, this is, this is. You make a certain amount of sales and you put away $10 for somebody who does a return. Right. right. So I'm not understanding that you're taking away, you made a sale well, now you've said two things, so I'm going to ask you to clarify. I'm taking out money for the returns, and then you said I'm taking out money for the discounts. Well, that's what I'm, I'm doing both. Some of the things got returned. Mm -hmm. Some of the things I had to put on sale to sell. Okay. So they're different events with different merchandise. Does that help? Yes, sir. Let's see if he can help. You're recording the sales for the original price and then taking the discount out later. So you're not recording the sale of how much the person actually paid. No, no, no. I am. I'm recording what they paid. So I'm going to have sale, and I'm going to credit that for $100. And then I'm going to have um, discount of Let's say I gave him twenty dollars off, and then I get cash for the rest. So I've got my debits and my credits. My debits equal my credits in the entry. So I sold hundred dollars worth of stuff. I had to discount it, and I got eighty bucks in cash, and it works. So where would discounts be? Um, These three things are all income statement. I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is an asset. Cash is an asset. A sale is, is revenue. Mm -hmm. Discount is a type of revenue. But notice it's a debit. It's a reduction of revenue. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're complementary accounts that are hooked together. And you have to add them together to get the correct balance. Remember, like you have equipment and accumulated depreciation. Mm -hmm. To get the ending balance, you have to take the two complementary accounts and add them together. There you go. Those are two complementary accounts. Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. So if you're estimating every month and then you compensate for the month after, <coughs> if it's the last month of the fiscal year, then do you just 
Okay, let's think. Let's let's assume calendar year. So every year or every month, every month I make a sale of something, right? Sale, sale, sale. And every month, someone will return something that they bought the previous month. So even if it's the end of the year, I still have to estimate what's going to get returned next year to make sure I get the right total in, in the December month. So, like, say you underestimate sales way under, and then you sell one. Sa sales are actual. I'm not estimating uh, sales. Okay. Okay, so I don't. I, I know what sales are at the end of November, so I'm estimating what's going to get returned over here, and then I know what sales are in December, and I estimate what's going to get returned in January, that was sold in December. Does that does that get it? And that doesn't really matter if you're, so say you're way over or way under. Okay, then you have what's called a bad estimate, and we need to revise our estimate. True it up. Yeah. So we'll true it up in, in, in January. So you'll have a, a correcting expense or revenue in, in January. But you want to refine your estimate, how you calculate it, so that it works better. Okay, and that doesn't matter for like, taxes and stuff? As long as it's not a huge difference. I mean, are you going to blow it by hundreds of thousands of dollars? I hope not, right? I mean, if you blow it by a couple thousand bucks and your Macy's, no, nobody cares, right? It's not material. Okay, sir. Uh, so the discount is immediate. You give an immediate discount, right? Correct. Uh, to the buyer. Correct. And then the, the allowance for returns is a prediction of the future. Of the future. All right. What do we know about a, a prediction of the future? It's wrong, <laughs> but we make the best prediction that we can, okay? All right, everybody good now? Yes. Okay. So, number two, assuming that all net sales are on credit, how much did American Eagle Outfitters collect from customers? I went from, oh, sorry, did I? I apologize. <laughs> My fault. All right, let's do it. Number two over under CP3-2. Assuming that $50 million of cost of sales was due to non-inventory purchase expenses, so that's distribution and occupancy costs, how much inventory did the company buy during the year? Okay, so $50 million of cost of sales is due to non-inventory purchases. Who tackled this one? Well, I was wondering, I don't know, it seems, I don't know if I'm missing something, because they say to use T account, but I feel like, wouldn't you just subtract that from cost of sales, or is there another, I mean, is it like more complicated than it sounds like? Right, we're trying to back into how many dollars of things they, they bought. So there's, there's a couple of factors that come into play here, and you're headed down the right path. So the first thing we have is it tells us what our cost of goods sold is, correct? How much is that? No, in the book, what does it say it is? Uh, 121,140,000. Everybody see it? 1 oh. One million one twenty one thousand one hundred and forty. Do I have it right? Oh, sorry. We can work with this. It's fine. I don't need all the zeros. So of this, fifty thousand 
was for warehousing. That tells me that the rest of cost of goods sold, or 9,071,140, was for the merchandise we actually sold. What? Well, this is this is for the actual merchandise. I missed a what? Yes, I can't do math. Nobody else busts me on that? Don't trust me. It's after 6 o'clock. I'm doing math. You've got to check it. <laughs> okay, so we paid $1,071,000 for the merchandise that we sold. Good. Now we can break this down a little bit further. The question is, how much did we buy during the year? Correct? Is this how much we bought? No, this is how much we sold. So we need to back into how much did we buy. We need to know what was our ending inventory. And you have to go look at the balance sheet for that. Inventory, 169,698. Yes? So this is what we sold. This is what we have left over. So that implies that at some point in time we had the both of those sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Yes? Everybody follow me? I know this one's a little bit Trick, tricky to think through, but follow me. So we had both of these sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Three, eight, uh, zero, four, two. So we had a million two sitting in a warehouse. Good? Everybody follows me. Did we buy all of that this year? No. We had some left over from last year. So if you look at the beginning inventory, which is last year's ending, 171,925. This was there at the beginning. Somebody's got to spot me the math on this. 319. Uh, Help me, I'm tired. <laughs> Eight, six, six zero. zero, one. Okay. <clears throat> if this was there at the beginning, that means we bought this much stuff. I'm going to do this a different way because it's the book just had us do it backwards without ever having us do it forwards. So can I do it forwards and, and walk you through this so it maybe makes more sense? Okay. <clears throat> Cost of goods sold is made up of several components. The first thing is we have some inventory at the beginning. And I'm going to use these numbers, okay? I have in a warehouse $1,068,913 worth of stuff. I don't care what it is. It could be Girl Scout cookies. Wasn't it 171 Nope. Oh. <laughs> I don't even have to check the math on that one to know it's wrong. 171,925. By the way, the class before us left the Girl Scout cookies and said if you guys want to eat them, and there's some Jolly Ranchers up here too. So for those of you who are falling asleep, I can keep you awake, right? <laughs> Good. So come help yourself to those. All right. <laughs> and there's two green cookies up here too. All right. Back to this. We had some inventory sitting in a warehouse. It's the $171,925. So to get to cost of goods sold, I need to know how much more stuff did I buy? So I bought some more stuff. 
And that's where the million dollars goes. So if I had some and I bought some more, this is my total available for sale. If I add these together, this is everything I could have possibly sold. Everybody follow me? If I sold everything, this is how much there was. But did I sell everything? No. I had some left at the end. I had 169, 698 left over. If I subtract that, that tells me how much I sold. And is that this number? I think it is. So this is how much of the stuff I sold by subtracting how much was left. Good? So this would be called your cost of goods sold, the cost of the actual things that you sold. Now, sometimes what happens is they'll include some other costs, like the warehousing costs, of the 50,000 bucks. And they'll call your total cost of goods sold the total number, 1,121,140. But this is the straightforward way that you calculate cost of goods sold. I had some, I bought some more. I could have sold this much, but I didn't. I had some left over, so I really sold this much. And that's your cost of goods sold number. So all they had us do was start with the bottom and back into that number. That's a really tough way to teach it backwards. That's why I like to show you both ways. Questions on that? No? Good? Somebody nod your head, yes or no? I just have a quick question. Why yeah. would they include uh, like variable overhead costs as a separate? Um, this is probably not variable. This is the warehousing. Like, if Safeway brings everything. Instead of the renting warehouse, then they just it would be fixed overhead. And um, is... You know, you have to define fixed and variable. So if I'm, if I'm Costco, and they bring everything through what they call a distribution center, right. and then it goes out on trucks to the individual stores, uh, even though I'm renting that warehouse, what's the likelihood of me closing a distribution center? Right. So Pretty small. So it's going to become a fixed cost, okay. relatively. And then why would they actually take it out of the cost of goods? No, they're adding it to the cost right. of goods. Yeah. Why, why would why it already in the cost of goods? Well, it's, it's easy. The, the thought process is, here's all my costs for the merchandise to get them in the store on a shelf, ready to go. So that's what it is. But wouldn't it include the people? Wouldn't no. the warehousing costs, though, be the same in the previous um, time period? So couldn't you? No, because you're going to have you have people in there that work in the warehouse and that's going to be included in here too. So the warehousing includes the guys driving the forklifts, the people doing the paperwork to keep track of which truck it goes on and that sort of stuff. So, you know, to some extent that is variable and it will change. Okay. Okay. So you've got fixed and variable costs going on here, but it is all of your costs to get it on a store shelf ready to, for somebody to go, oh, I want this. Okay. 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 Yes, ma'am. Sold. CGS. Cost of goods sold. CGS. Yeah. Um, write that one down because I'm going to use it a lot in this class. Thank you for asking. Other questions? Pain. Yes? Just me? Okay. I lost my spot. What were we on? Page 145? 57. I can't even remember that. Um, calculate general administrative and selling expenses as a percent of sales. How do we do that? Anybody tackle that?
calculate general selling and administrative expenses as a percent of sales. So you go to your income statement on page C4 and you come down and you find selling general and administrative expenses in 2009 it's four hundred and fourteen thousand dollars you divide that by sales for that year one million eight thirty four and you get a percentage that's all you gotta do it says net sales on that line cost of goods are not part of sales okay cost of goods are separate they're actually an expense and they reduce, you subtract cost of goods from net sales to get gross margin. Okay? Gross profit, gross margin. Good. So all we're doing is converting it to a ratio, a fraction, by dividing selling general and administrative by net sales. Remember, did we talk about it as common sizing? We will. What, how do you compare, let me throw this up here. When my arm gives out, we're going home. Okay, I have three years, 2009, 2008, 2007. <laughs> I have sales and I have G&A expenses. Say my sales are a thousand and my G&A is 900. In 2008 my sales are 800 and my G&A is 600. My sales in 2007 were 750 and general and administrative expenses. And my G&A was 5 80. Okay, so sales went up. Am I doing better? Yes. From that perspective, yes. But my costs went up, so am I doing worse? Right, if your cost goes up, that's bad, yes? Sales went up going into 2009, but my expenses went way up. Am I doing better or worse? I'm doing better because I had more sales, but I'm doing worse because I had... So you, people get confused. So what we do is we turn them into a ratio. Who has a calculator? Take this and divide by that. Would you take this and divide by that? Someone else do the, the third one. 75%. So this is 100%, right? Okay. This is 100%. 580. This divided by oh, that? That's okay. Over here? Here. Okay. So all of a sudden I've what's called common sized. It no longer matters that sales are more or that your expenses are more or less. I know that in this year, my G&A costs, general and administrative costs, were 77.3% of sales, or of total sales. So this is gone, this is a cost, and I don't make a profit on it. So theoretically, if, the num if I drive this number down, that leaves more for net income, more profit. So when I come over here to the next year, that number went down. You can definitely go, I'm doing better, because I left more room for profit. Everyone see that? And then it jumps to 90%. And this is where people get fired. Because <laughs> it went the wrong way. Bad. Real bad. Good? So I have much less for profit. And that's the concept behind common sizing or looking at it as a percentage. Yes, sir? More like an idea. Yeah. But we also do this as investors to see if the company is doing better or worse. Or we look at what's driving it. So if we're looking at Macy's and we go, gee, their G&A is, is out of whack, something's going on, we start looking in the notes or in the management letter about why. Or we just say, this is crazy, I don't want to buy it. But you can start to explain why they're doing worse. 
by doing a little research. I see if you look at that like quarterly and say you need to cut monthly. monthly. Every month. Every month, yes, sir. And that the general administrative expense, that's just how much they're spending to create that sale? Correct. Okay. This doesn't include the salespeople or their commissions or you know, other things. And then for this ratio, would you just, is it like the common sizing ratio? Or? Mm -hmm. okay. Later on, we'll learn that you can do this for every line item on your income statement and find out where the, the problem is. Good? All right. Who's had enough of the homework? <laughs> Questions about the homework? Any questions? 